Well, it's, lo it's lovely to be invited. Thank you very much. Um, it's an honor to learn more about STEAM over the next two days. And I start off trying to set the scene just with what I've learned um, working with um, colleagues, also European networks. So I represent you know, STEAM Inc. It's a STEAM innovation and curriculum project, also funded under the Erasmus. And um, I'll just take you a little bit through that how, how that evolved, and I think also, I, I really like the introduction. You said some of the things I thought a lot, but sometimes we are actually, we are looked at very strangely if we say those things. So for example, now the student being a customer or the future employer, and this very close link, just to think about employment and the matrix, um, the, the metric, sorry, the metrics now for universities, we have to demonstrate how many students get employment really fast and how much they are paid. So you think really, is that really the way we want education to go? And we have next to no say in some countries because the government is putting that direction out. So it, it, you spoke very much from my heart with your introduction of still trying to remember what higher education is about. It's about horizon setting, about freeing. It's not just about getting a job at the end. It's also about the way we change, the way we become social beings and better individuals, and the way we can find our place, contribute and create. That sums it up to me. So against our lots, and I'm afraid British universities have a very good reputation, but the way they're going, it's also very, very, um, I would say neoliberal, definitely happening. I think it's happening in many other countries. And they are very interesting tensions. So I try and explain a little bit more why I try and keep a different spirit alive um, and how to navigate those challenges, really. So bear with me. We'll start off a little bit with how I got steamed. So you think, oh, she wrote that article. She must have done it for donkey years. Well, I haven't. And the way I started off was simply geography. Geography is a lovely home for people who aren't decisive. Do I want to go this way or that way? Oh, no, I like social stuff, but I definitely like sciences as well. So it was a perfect home for me. And I did natural and social sciences as part of it. I was at that time very much interested in the environment. I wasn't quite so much bothered about people and then very quickly realized, well, you know, it all hangs together. You have to have an interest in both. You have to be aware of both. And then I followed it up with a degree in environmental management. And again, you would think, well, what does that have to do with STEAM, for example? Well, it had a lot to do because it was an interdisciplinary degree. And I think that's what I liked about my education in, in Great Britain. It was possible to choose degrees that really already brought things together. And I find a lot of forms when you go and have to fill in, you know, what is your background? And they give you one discipline or one little sort of silo. And I find, well, I'm sorry, I'm not, one, I'm not just this, I'm not just that, I'm just that. Where's the interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary option? Hello? <laughs> we just don't think like that yet. And I think that also links back to sort of our institutional way we think and have done things for a long time. But it hasn't really caught up. So I was very lucky I got hired um, as project manager and then as researcher. And most of my projects were very creative they weren't actually having necessarily always the arts and it. Some had creative writing in it and artistic expression and certainly creative thinking. And also strange combinations, uh, combining criminology with forestry, for example. Um, I can't say I always was the creator of it. I was hired for a job and I sort of had to pick it up, but I loved it. Um, so some projects I helped design and Steam Inc. is one of them. Um, and others, I basically was simply part of a group where we delivered this and worked it out and, and learned lots through it. And I think going through different institutions was also very interesting. Some very formal and well-known and, yeah, and others less well-known, but also really, really rich in providing learning. So the, you see how I got steamed. It really started only around 2019, 2018, 2019. And it was a bit of luck. 
because a colleague of mine said, we have a project, it's design thinking, design thinking training, I think you fit, and we need somebody from your faculty. You know, these opportunities sometimes really come almost, you know, not planned, not, I didn't plan out my career like that, it was opportunistic in a way, never regretted it, it's lovely, absolutely great, the learning sense. So like also Claudia mentioned, and Julio, there's, I think, a design thinking approach in our uh, way we sometimes come to STEAM, which is also interesting. So quite a strong design thinking um, foundation to some of it. And very early on, I was actually part of the Interdis International Transdisciplinary Conference 2003. I'm not sure whether some of you might also have heard of it or were there. And that's very interesting because that was one of the early conferences really putting transdisciplinarity on the map rather than interdisciplinary. Inter interdisciplinarity, and it really um, showcased that it, it isn't just throwing different disciplines together, there's much more to that, and I'll try and take you through that journey. So there's just a few of the participants um, from the STEAM innovation and curriculum project, and I'm afraid we have that word in there, and it was simply because part of my university is very much into innovation, and also the cause, you find a lot of funding calls always have innovation in it, whether you believe in it or not, because we stand on the shoulders of giants and not everything is totally innovative and not necessarily uh, is innovative better than what we actually know to be good and work with that. And I find, again, there's already very interesting tensions, but we chose that and we got the project funded. Hey, so we were happy about that. And you can also see we had quite unusual participants, for example, Ars Electronica, uh, based in Linz. And we also had um, University uh, of Dublin, the Trinity College, but their science gallery. Interestingly enough, funding isn't in their favour. They were shut earlier this year. Really good endeavours. There are other science galleries that are still active. But just because we have good ideas and good things happening, it doesn't mean we get the funding to keep them running. So that's also the, just the current reality check. Um, so what did we do in the STEAM Innovation Curriculum Project? We started also in 2019, and we have an extension due to COVID just till January 23. So that means we are reasonably far on also with our project and now just finalizing the, uh, the third um, output main output. So we, tr we started off in a way with definitions, thinking about defining the context. And we looked at intersections across current European higher education institutions. And that was quite broadly, so it wasn't just universities. And we wanted to develop a collaborative definition of higher education STEAM. And I'll present quite a lot on that today. But more so, we also wanted to produce actually um, be beyond sort of looking at approaches and how how we can maybe think about them, they're relevant to higher education, also think about specific methods and how we can improve and develop methods um, to help implement that kind of STEAM thinking and mindset. And we didn't, we also went beyond the curriculum. So we tried to think about that in terms of just the whole of the university, higher education and related institutions and also public wider engagement. And the final one we are still in the process of developing is an evaluation framework. So evaluating what you're doing, but also making it easier for others to evaluate, be it the students that participate in our courses and, and modules, or be that in terms of projects and learning. Um, it is not just driven by the way we have to show impact. I think it's just a useful reflective mechanism again. And that is so important, that constant reflection. So when we came together to um, think about, you know, what, what is it that makes STEAM and higher education uh, so special and what are the ingredients that we felt had to be there, don't think it was an easy, an easy way. We used the workshop, um, kind of a design thinking approach loosely in different methods and, and sharing. And there were a lot of discussions and we had to come together. So not all partners knew each other. Some did, some, some not. And, but from those rich discussions and from 
working through certain methods, we tried to really bring out what we felt in our own experience or reflective practice was really key. And then we tried to formulate that. And some said, well, we don't really want a definition. It's quite harsh. It's quite it's too static. So we also tried to formulate it in a way to explain why it is important. And it also, I think, signals that it's not a selective list of things you, that make STEAM, but the combination. So we found that a higher education approach to STEAM potentially involves, we said still potentially, because sometimes you don't cover everything, but the ideal would be to try and bring in as much as pos possible. So it's a culture or cultures that puts the arts and sciences on an equal footing, operating within a paradigm that is process-driven, student-centered, holistic, and provides permission to fail alongside being comfortable with uncertain end results. And I think especially that permission to fail, we found a lot of students now are so drilled to get their first class degree, you know, get into employment, show how great they are. They don't even allow themselves to learn and to learn from when things don't go so well. And I think also in publications, <coughs> we quite often hide actually the tricky bits and we just present the good bits to look good. Uh, there's a slight danger in it because I think quite often when things don't go so well or when trying things out, we don't know whether it works out. And that process though, you learn a lot from that. And I think being more open about it is actually very healthy. So it's about being collaborative, diverse, and delivered through safe spaces. And that links back to the <coughs> permission to fail, permission to learn, permission to learn from each other. Establishing a mindset of radical openness. And I think that word radical, you can interpret it to whichever extreme, but it just means not just open, yeah, I listen to you, but actually, no, I will really listen to you. I'll just let go of my preconception. Let's just see what is out there. Let's just see what can happen. That is different to just being sort of open, yeah, I listen to you. Okay, and then we do what I want to do. It's about flexibility, reflection, experimentation, and curiosity. Generating qualities that promote learning, cooperation, and multimodality. So again, you don't just use things that you're familiar with. You, you allow yourself to break out of the comfort zone and actually experiment with approaches or with new ideas or different ways of expressing it. And you just see where it gets you. And that is certainly different. I think in the last three years, I've done a lot more of that through STEAM ventures than when I did interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary work before. And that was for me a sort of quite an interesting light bulb moment because I thought, well, what has made it, you know, how is it different? I've worked in inter and transdisciplinary projects for over 20 years. What did it add? But I felt, first of all, I became calmer. Uh, so when I go into a big group, I just, I literally go in more with interest, which is lovely, sort of just more open. Park myself in a way, you know, don't, don't just think, oh, I need to say this, oh, I need to represent my university, oh, I need to blah, blah, blah. No, you just sort of go there and, and, and you open up. And then also because um, sometimes you think, oh, that's a strange person or that's a strange viewpoint. But if you stay open and you see why they say that or why they think like that or why they propose that and go with it, sometimes absolutely amazing things happen. And this then also taught me a lot for going back into the classroom, be that online or, or um, physically in the classroom. Because some students also we, ha we mark as, oh, they are promising, they are fantastic. Oh, they are sort of dragging behind. You know, they will never get a good job. No, absolutely not. They just have different stages and, and different abilities, and they need different nurturing and, and different development stages to, to bring themselves in. And that's, I've, for me personally, that's been very liberating and, and very enriching uh, to, to learn to do that more. Um, and I think we're almost through the definition, but what is also quite interesting is that it's not just about talking, it's also quite a lot about doing, or not just about thinking, <coughs> but also physically sharing things and doing things, prototyping, coming up actually up with ideas, and that then also links to your real context. So while higher education is really important, I think a lot of institutions have either very close links with industry and some projects linked to wider society, but actually quite a lot don't have such 
close opportunities and links with the wider society, communities, neighborhoods, people. Which is also interesting, and maybe that is actually something we need to nurture alongside our strong industry links, because I think it has been neglected for quite a while. Core and really key is critical thinking, creativity and communication, and all three were really flagged up in, in the introduction early on by Claudio and Julio. So this is a bit of context setting and the pace will now speed up a bit. So when we looked at approaches to STEAM that we were familiar with, we tried to categorize them and we thought about elements, themes that sort of um, brought them, you know, sort of act as umbrellas. And we identified behavior, cultures, engagement and space. By no means do we say this is the one and only and the best, but it worked for us. A similar, that's exactly the same with the definition, so we put it out there for discussion. Um, but we, we found it useful because these are all aspects that are very important for STEAM, but also help us to think about the strength and differences of different uh, methods and approaches. So connecting and connectedness is also important along all these because most of our approaches really fitted into more than one category, but had a sort of a dominant one. But generally about STEAM activities, I think it is about connecting and connect, um, connectedness, but it is not just about the disciplines, it goes well beyond that. And I think to realize that it's between people, learners, environments, philosophies, um, to generate sort of this fresh thinking and perspectives and trying to dare to do things slightly different and enjoying it um, is really important. So just to an overview, this is obviously based on the partners that we had. We identified approaches that we wanted to share and we, we categorized them, so you see how we did it. Um, and this is just three examples, they're all quite different. So approaches is really the overarching things. It could be um, um, courses, modules, big, big things, and then methods sit within it, which are more specific um, time-bound um, activities. And we've then worked after the approaches, we worked more on the methods. And these are just different examples. Uh, that you see, so it, it's related sometimes to lab and to bring the art in a way, in, in a lab into the art school. It is about the course, how you actually also keep in touch with the alumni and bring it different people to help you with the course, to make those connections, to uh, facilitate that transdisciplinary learning. And it is sometimes also about new buildings. So my university invested a lot of money in renovating a um, historic building. It was a, an old manufacturing place which is typical for Birmingham, and basically put steam house in it. So it's, it's also about the space, facilitating, but it's obviously not just about the space. And then a little bit about the methods. Again, there's really many examples. They're listed on the, on the website. And it is a little bit about, you know, how do we want to do now the teaching in the 21st century different to what we used to? And don't I wouldn't say my university, I think, is trying to be at the forefront, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a long, slow <laughs> um, path as well. Um, so we're just sort of finding our feet in it. And, as I said, innovation is really the word that, that my superiors constantly use. And I, I quite often throw in, I'm now known as the sort of the person who speaks what our, even if she disagrees with my senior managers because I think it is just useful to remind it is not just about all about innovation. And this is one of the methods, and yes, online, you know, it's neat because it looks nice and colorful. Um, so this is a uh, mirror boards were used a lot, I think across many universities for um, methods. And it's just a process where you start sort of with self reflection, bringing ideas together, discussing things, then taking ideas forward, choosing them, helping the, each to develop specific ideas, then decide on what kind of project idea to take forward, and then mapping out that, what does that project require? So that was one of the methods that was arrived through hacking, through reflection, and it isn't all new at all. You know, there are basically methods in it, uh, specific sub-methods in it that are known. It's just the way we put them together, and the way we make them work, and the way we set the context, that was a bit different. And we experimented with it and it worked very well. It worked well with students, it worked well with mixing students and staff, and it worked very well even with senior managers. So hey, that was a very nice, you know, having a, 
uh, in a way, a process that works well with different audiences was very nice and refreshing. But especially we built it on the premise that it shouldn't discriminate and it should be uh, very inclusive. And only because you're an undergrad student doesn't mean you have less to say than if you're the associate dean in a faculty. And that process also helped to do exactly that. It put people on a level keel, you listen to each other, you work together. And these are just other examples, so you can you know, look at it through your heart's content, and I just flagged the first one, the showcase, simply because the description is quite rich in it. But you, know, you, you can dip into any of them, so they're, they're quite diff very different methods, because we are all very different institutions from each other. Um, just very quickly on the evaluation, again, it's also quite a thorough approach led by um, Science Gallery, who got now absorbed into uh, Dublin University. Um, very, very thorough, but as I said, it's work in progress. So just wait another three months and you can see the output. It might be also helpful in your activities, how to evaluate uh, STEAM projects and activities. It's just to show some of the way we do it um, through prompts, evaluation questions, but also defining indicators so we all work together again. What I love about it, it wasn't about, oh, you always work on indicators or you're best qualified, you can write it or do most of it. No, it doesn't work like that. We have an open document, we say who contributes to what, form groups, discuss it, and we all work together on it. And I really like this way of working. Um, yeah. So, there's obviously some key publications already, and most of you might be familiar with the, with the article, but there are other ones, there's also the handbook. And we find actually a lot of readers like the handbook rather than an academic article. Um, yeah, because we are, in a way, STEAM practitioners. Um, so you can, it's all freely accessed, which is nice, open access. But also we are trying to develop things further now. So we, we try and make the link more explicitly STEAM and transdisciplinarity and also bring it to different audience. So for example, presented ICA 2022, and actually some in the audience, I met them there, which is very lovely. And for me, going to an arts and electronics sort of based and sciences based conference, I would have never chosen it if I hadn't been part of STEAM. And one of my colleagues, Andrew Newman, he's an arts electronica, hadn't said, come on, let's do this paper, we'll go there and we'll present it. I would have never gone, and you know what? It was one of, one of the nicest conferences ever. The atmosphere was lovely, it was very stimulating, it was very rich, it was very egalitarian. It was lovely, very, very stimulating. Um, so, there are some, I guess what I worked on was, and that wasn't part of the original project, was I really wanted also to link it to the academic context. So quite often we work with practitioners, even though we are academics, or quite a lot of us are academics, not all of them. Um, we didn't really bring in, oh, have you read this? And have, oh, and this happened before. And by the way, you know, they wrote about that. No, we hadn't done that. It was all experiential in drawing it out. And I wanted to make sure that our work also had the academic underpinnings and we understand how, where do we sit within it and learn from it. What can we draw out? What insights, what clarifications can we draw from that? to engage with the academic literature, what is written up. And just like you said before, there was a dearth. I mean, what I, when I did a literature review, there was so little on higher education. I was really pleased about that special issue. It's an open access journal. Hey, and they waived the fee for open access. I thought, yay, <laughs> lovely. So it, is, it was a very good opportunity, but it also was in a way that time pressure to write it. And I think it was a very good exercise for me and colleagues who contributed um, to do that, to go through that formal process. And generally, I find actually writing, writing is a good process just to sharpen, reflect, and then also express, try and express as clearly as possible what, what is going on. And a part of the next step was to link it to transdisciplinarity. And this is a, a diagram drawn very quickly. <laughs> um, but I hope it captures something. So quite often people, when they talk about inter- and transdisciplinarity, they're actually still in the camp of multidisciplinarity. So they have their own disciplines, they join up, they talk a little bit together, 
and there's some sort of draw some conclusion at the end for it. Mm, it's definitely multidisciplinary. Whereas interdisciplinary, I think there's already some, you're sort of fusing the boundaries a bit. You're coming closer together, you also think about different approaches, how to work, that cuts across the boundaries more. So that's very exciting, and I think for many, many years, really, that was my home territory, interdisciplinary. Increasingly, I realize what transdisciplinarity means. Initially, I thought the definition was really, well, you just connect with people beyond academia, sort of citizens, decision makers, whatever. Um, but it's actually much more than that. It is that within the participants themselves and within the approaches, you actually really try and, and step out, undiscipline yourself, and really bring in yourself and come from a wider perspective. So your disciplinary <coughs> backgrounds, and I would say that might be several disciplines anyway, is still important. Doesn't mean to necessarily get rid of it. It just means you don't just present it in those narrow silos, but you, you, you become open to fusion. And therefore, the boundaries are not so clear to be drawn later. And therefore, the way you go about it is a bit more chaotic, but also it's, it's just more encompassing. And the context around it, you see, it strays into the context. It isn't so nicely, you know, project delineated. It, it spills out. So for me, definitely, you know, most interest goes now in, into the transdisciplinary. And I think with our complex challenges that we are facing, with all the weird things that are happening and seems to go in the wrong direction rather than actually into a, a healthy future. I think we need to stick and fight for it to keep that going. And what was also very nice reading, even though a lot was drawn from primary, secondary education backgrounds, some from higher education, but relatively little, I think what was identified just bore a lot of relevance to what we all experience, you know, and a lot of the keywords you will see what we draw out were about seven to nine keywords, but there are lots more. And I think you can, you can get inspiration and motivation from the whole range of them. So they are also presented in, in the paper if you wanted to go back with the full references. And then obviously going, then the next step that we evolved was to take it to thinking about, so how does STEAM map onto transdisciplinary ventures? Is it just another transdisciplinary thing or, or you know, how, how does it link? And so we saw, we were beginning to see more like STEAM as a, as a means, as a nexus for trans, uh, promoting or working on transdisciplinary sustainability. Because STEAM, I think, is, is ideally suited for thinking about sustainability because it's so complex and not just weak sustainability, but strong sustainability. It means not just talking about it and doing a little bit at the edges, but really trying to, to think across it much more holistically and seriously. And also making the link beyond academia. And we came up just with, again, we, we just looked at our approaches and tried to come up with, with framing, inspiring, exploring, challenge solving, and innovating as sort of the common denominators. So this is now the last three slides coming up. Um, just to say, I also like the way hybrid had humanities in it. You didn't force maths or anything like that in it that wasn't in there. And I think for a lot of STEAM, whatever this STEAM stands for can be quite flexible and does not necessarily involve engineering. It might be other things. It might not necessarily be math. It might be other things. And I th initially, I, I never identified myself as a STEAM academic because I said, I'm not. I've, I've come from different disciplines. They're not really represented there the way I want them. Now I said, well, that's fine. You know, I, I use it as an umbrella. And, and the spirit of it, I subscribe to. Um, so I think a lot of people and a lot of work is out there that has not got the STEAM label, but it's very relevant to STEAM or is, in fact, STEAM. Um, and I think the, the six sort of core ones for me is also process-driven, collaborative, radical openness, curiosity, critical thinking, prototyping, and making. So as a, as a framework to always as a reference point to keep going. So there's mushrooming of STEAM, but I think it is quite good to discuss and think about what makes STEAM STEAM, and not just to lump everything into it. But as I said, the, the term itself is ambiguous. We don't know which disciplines to involve and what is the minimum. Is it one arts-based 
subject and then another one? Is that the minimum? Would that be STEAM then? Or does it require more? How to, I think mainstreaming sometimes or is embedding it sometimes also gives it, restricts it. It's actually quite nice sometimes to be marginal, be, in, be, be, be at the new sort of forefront. Um, the role of artists was questioned a lot. Are they catalysts? Are they equal partners? Are they just there to illustrate or present something then to what we've done? They would all give them a very different standing in, in, in that context. And so there's not really answers to it. These are reflection points. And I think there, there are not necessarily specific answers. There are multiple answers to them. And also whether to aim for inter or transdisciplinary. That's also interesting because a lot talks about interdisciplinary rather than transdisciplinary and to think about what that extra step actually means. So how to really facilitate that? I think I've already had a very quick chat at the beginning, even for this institute. You know, there's lots of challenges actually bringing down those boundaries and actually working across. We, it sounds lovely and maybe sometimes we have to do it, but actually doing it properly and working through that is very challenging. Now, if we deliver STEAM, um, STEAM modules, STEAM courses, how do we do that with our faculty structures? And our highest are lovely in promoting it. Yeah, we, we're pushing it. Yeah, we are one of the first universities doing this. Have they facilitated or broken down the barriers? They're willing now to do that, but we, even us, we haven't. We've done it in a way by doing something outside the faculty, by having developed a STEAM house. But it's, it's, you can see almost there's certain faculties try and get the foot in first. That's not the idea. So <laughs> the, the politics and the realities and our structures are not always terribly helpful in that endeavor. Um, and I think finding the commonalities, but also being very patient with the differences and working through them is an, is an exciting way. And using STEAM methods to do that can actually help down, break down those barriers. Experimentation, so what is also interesting, and there are some papers in the conference, uh, interesting to hear. I think the teachers are also, the, the academics are sometimes forgotten. Yeah, yeah, you just come up with it. Yeah, you, you, you can just do it sort of thing. No, you know, we need training opportunities actually to engage with it, the time to develop ourselves and learn more about it. So for me also the question is, is it sort of what is steam in a way, really strong steam and what is weak steam? and be sort of aware of that. And I guess my tendency would be to work towards like strong sustainability and strong steam to try and bring in as many of the elements, the mindset, the methods and, and attitudes to that as possible. To what extent does steam always need a social context? That's also interesting because a lot still do it very marginally. Um, and that would also maybe drag you away from just that industry focus. Because I think that industry focus, especially strongly advocated in um, America, USA, but also I find it very strong <laughs> in Britain. Um, so maybe sometimes that actually puts us away from being uh, radical open and not allowing really activism and is much more output driven. And I think in Smith and Steam, you get all those, those drivers and some people promote that as really key to Steam and important and others would say, hey, hang on. And it was very refreshing to hear your perspective this morning in this institute that you're actually also seeing it more critically. So that relates to the employment orientation, the, the need for social relevance in my view, and also the need for being more open to community involvement. And then how to demonstrate that learning and what does impact mean and what actually do we want to measure and how. As I said, we are trying to make some suggestions on that front, but it's not worked out at all. So yeah, I think it's uh, exciting but challenging to sum it up. I think it will take you out of your comfort zone and it should take you out of your comfort zone. Um, I think there's a lot out there where it encourages you either to use or to develop yourself new methods and, and approaches. I think the rule of the arts, just trying out different things and how to involve them and work with them. And, if you come from the sciences or from the artists, also how they want to bring themselves in and how, in fact, you bring yourself in as a creative person within a non-arts-based discipline is a very important question. Because only because you are a scientist doesn't mean you're not creative or you can't, you're not good at actually 
um, arts-based critical artistic thinking. Some actually straddle both anyway. And then I think a lot is about empowering students and staff to, to do what is good for higher education and for the world. Just to finish with one quote, I found that a little bit by chance, but was very happy to read that. Um, it's in a transdisciplinary <clears throat> theory and practice um, book. And he, Hans Dielemann links reflective action and artful doing. I think I, I just love that combination. And he emphasizes spaces of experimentation in imagination. And hey, imagination is to my liking a better word than innovation to use. So I really like that quote. And for, for him to, trans, um, to characterize transdisciplinarity, and it should be considered as both a transformative process as well as an, an epistemological, ontological, and methodological endeavor. And I think that is also important. So it's not just about methods and approaches, it's also about the mindset and the real context that is associated with it. Yeah, so thank you very much.